Hi and welcome back. Today we're going to continue on with our journey about learning more about the periodic table and the first thing we need to do is look at a property known as core charge. So let's get started. Core charge can be explained as the effective nuclear charge felt by the electrons that is imposed by the nucleus. Okay, so if we think about it, we know that electrons are negative in charge and protons are positive in charge. That means that they will attract each other because opposite charges attract. So we have a positively charged nucleus and then the electron cloud exists outside this nucleus. So we're looking at the charge between the positive nucleus and the, the negative electrons. The thing to remember with these is that we need to take it from the perspective of the electron that we're looking at. Typically, this is our valence shell electrons. So the core charge of an atom is determined by taking the atomic number. So you may remember from when we did our atomic structure, the atomic number, which is the number of protons, so Z, and subtracting the shielding electrons. So these are any electrons that are between the electron of interest and the nucleus. So if you think about it, if these are all negative electrons in here, then the negative charge of these electrons is going to diminish the amount of the positive charge from the nucleus that this electron might feel. So we do this by saying that we subtract the core or shielding electrons. And this is essentially any of the electrons between the nucleus and the shell that we're looking at. Okay, so in the case if we looked at something like uh, sodium, if we look at sodium, then what we can see here, this would have an atomic number of 11, for Z, our electron configuration is going to be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. So this is 10. And then we've got 1 in the third S. So that would be 3s1. So that means that this is going to be my valence shell. And then all the electrons between the nucleus and my valence shell, which are in my first shell and my second shell, are going to be the shielding electrons. So we can determine which is the electrons that we're looking at and the shielding electrons by looking at our electron configuration. So when we go to calculate core charge, we need to be able to determine these shielding electrons. Magnesium here, which has an atomic number Z equal to 12. We have 2 in the first shell, 10 in the second shell, and then 2 in the third shell. It has a 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2 arrangement. So this means that we can take the electrons in the first and the second shell, add those together, and we find that there are 10 shielding electrons between the valence electrons and the outer shell electrons in magnesium. So our core charge is going to equal is going to equal 12 minus the 10 shielding so it will have a plus 2 core charge. So this means that the electrons in the valence shell are drawn towards the nucleus with a force equal to about a plus 2. Okay, so this just gives us an idea of the magnitude of the force. If we look at something like beryllium, we can see here it has a plus four. There are two electrons in the inner shell, two in the outer shell. So the core charge here would be four minus two, again is plus two. Magnesium we calculated was plus two. And again, if we look at calcium, remember it has 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6. And then because it is a transition metal, we're going to go to our 4s. And that now gives us 18, 20. So these 18 are our inner core electrons. 4s2, remembering the 4s is our valence shell. So these are the ones we're going to be looking at. So it's going to be, oops, 
There we go. That's better. <laughs> so for us two is going to be our valence shell. So we're going to have 20, which is the Z for calcium, is minus 18 is going to give us a plus 2. And if you have a look at this, all these elements have the same core charge. In fact, they're in the same group of the periodic table. So in order to be able to start talking about trends in the periodic table, we need to be able to calculate the core charge. So you should write this down and have a go at practicing calculating some core charges. In fact, if we look at core charge as it varies across the periodic table, we see a periodic trend occur, the first of the trends that we need to look at. If we start at period three here with sodium, sodium is atomic number 11. So sodium has an atomic number of 11. It will have a complete S uh, sorry, complete first shell and second shell, which means its shielding electrons are 10, which means it will have a plus one core charge. We already calculated for magnesium that it was plus two. There's no transition uh, metals in period three. For aluminium, we have Z of 13. We still have the same 10 electrons shielding between the nucleus because we're still only putting electrons into the valence shell at this time, which means that its core charge will be plus 3. In fact, group 14 will be plus 4. Phosphorus in group 15 will be plus 5. Sulfur in group 16 will be plus 6, plus 7 for the halogens, and plus 8 for our noble gases. So we can see that as we move across the periodic table from left to right, core charge increases. So core charge increases from left to right across the periodic table. Because we are placing electrons each time we move, into the same valence shell. So because we haven't changed shell, the number of core shielding electrons stays constant, but we increase the protons by one each time, increasing the pull of the nucleus on the electron cloud as we move, which is what is shown by an increasing core charge. When we look down a group, however, okay, groups will have the same core charge. So elements that are in the same group will have the same core charge. And this is an important as this will help us explain a number of the trends that we see in both the physical and chemical properties of the periodic table, which we will learn about in the next two videos. I hope that makes sense. Practice calculating your core charge, determining which are the core shielding electrons um, when it comes to calculating your core charge will help you a lot. And I'll see you in class.